Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming out today to the Refine the IDX website show. My name is Ed Seibert, and I work in a website deployment, uh, and I do some front-end stuff here at Refinely. Uh, today, we are going to talk specifically about your IDX website. Uh, there is also a webinar on Thursday that is all about your Refinely CRM. I highly suggest you go to the IDX, or I'm sorry, the CRM webinar uh, at least once. There's a lot of great stuff that you can learn from that webinar uh, to see how your website and your CRM can integrate. Uh, but like I said, today we are going to talk all about your IDX website. And you should be able to see here my screen. We've got a, uh, a sample website up here. It's the Real Ties website. Uh, it's the website for a fake uh, real estate agency. Most of the uh, information you're going to see on here is just going to be dummy text, placeholder text. Um, like if you scroll down below the listings, the uh, the testimonials that they've got here on this page is just a whole bunch of nonsense. Um, so don't worry about that content being gibberish so much because, like I said, it is placeholder text. Uh, instead, today we're going to talk about specifically uh, your home page. Uh, the page that people land on when they first come to your site, uh, if they've come to your site through uh, you know, perhaps an ad uh, or some other way that you're promoting your site. A lot of times people will come to your site through the blog or through a, uh, a community page, uh, and that's, that's great. Whatever gets them onto your site uh, is great. Uh, that sort of content is you know, more specialized. Whereas the home page is more of a uh, a welcome page, uh, or is, uh, it's known a landing page. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the home page real quick. Uh, now there are several different uh, themes that Refinely offers, so your site might not uh, look exactly like this, uh, but you will see uh, recurring uh, things that appear on just about every home page. Um, at the very top here, you're gonna see a little small menu. Uh, that's a menu that you can edit, but we recommend that you don't. Uh, this menu is navigation for people who are leads so that they can see their saved searches and their favorites and that sort of thing. Um, you've got your logo, and we're gonna show you how to change the logo. You've got your menu here, um, and you actually change the menu uh, through the back end as well. You can add, subtract, move things around on the menu. As you see, this site has a whole bunch of stuff on the menu. You really don't need that much stuff. Uh, in fact, three of these links here actually just go to the property search. Uh, then you've got uh, an image here, sort of a splash image. Uh, we are going to show you how to change that image. Um, it's actually something called a slider. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into the back of the website uh, and show you how to change around some of this stuff. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here. Uh, no matter what theme you have, all the way at the bottom, the last link that you'll have is a link that says Site Administration. And when you click on that, if you're already logged in, it will take you right to the dashboard, uh, as you see here. Otherwise, it's going to take you to the login page. Uh, one thing I do want to point out on the dashboard that you might have seen already is this latest Refinely Site Features uh, widget area. Uh, you might see it just as a bar like this. If you do, just click on it and it'll open. Every time we add a new uh, feature or a new uh, special uh, toy on your Refinely websites, we're going to post about it here. Uh, I am also going to post a blog about some of the stuff that we talk about today. Uh, so go ahead and keep an eye out for that. So the first thing let's talk about here is that big splash image that uh, that you'll see on the uh, on the front of your website. And like we said, it's called a slider. For instance, on this theme, it looks like this. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you the classic theme. You see it's sort of like a blurred out image there. Uh, by default, you know, there's an image on your site, uh, but we highly recommend that you change it, sort of personalize it, make it your own. Uh, so what we're going to do is go into the dashboard. There's a special section where you can edit uh, your homepage, and that's called the Appearance section. And it's on your dashboard all the way here on the left. If you just click on Appearance or if you click on Customize, either one of these little things here, 
will take you to the same place. It will take you to the appearance page. So we're going to click on that. And what happens is um, a mock-up of your home page will load on the right-hand side, and you can start to edit it. You can start to make changes. Um, most of the things that you're going to change are going to be in two sections. There's the widget section, and there's the theme options section. Uh, you can do some color changes as well. There is a section here that says background image, and you might think that's where you go to change this the splash picture here, but it's actually not. If you put an image in the background, what it's going to do is put that image wherever you see white space here. So down here behind this uh, listings widget here, all this white space is actually where that picture will go. Um, not many people use the background image. Uh, if you do use it, we recommend using, you know, sort of like a small um, tiled image. And there is actually uh, a, a nice little website here that uh, I wanted to show you if I can remember where I put it. Here it is. It's called subtlepatterns.com. Uh, and if you want to add a background image, this is a good website to visit if it loads up here today, subtlepatterns.com. Of course, the intertubes decide to stop working. Well, maybe this site is down. We'll take a we'll take a look at it again in a little bit, uh, see if it's uh, if it's working for us. Um, but that's really more of like a you know a little pattern uh, uh, to just to break up the white space. If you want to actually change the splash image, you're going to go into your theme options section, and we'll click theme options, and you'll see the first thing you see is a place where you can add um, a logo. For instance, this is that fake Real Ties company, uh, but you can put any logo that you want up here. Uh, you should probably avoid putting something that's too big up there. A lot of people want to put, you know, like a really big picture of themselves uh, with all your contact info and stuff like that in there. You really don't need that. Um, you really shouldn't think of this as a, a place to advertise because your website isn't really an advertising platform. It's really the product. Once you get people on the site, you want them to start searching for properties. So you definitely want to have some sort of branding ref reflected on your site, um, but you don't really need to dominate the homepage with that. So that's where you set your logo. Um, right down below that, you'll see the home page slider section, and that's this big splash image section here. Uh, there's a filters uh, design, horizontal and vertical, and what that's referring to is this search box here. If you put it on horizontal, then people can start typing in uh, their search box. Say they want to view properties here in Estero, Florida. That's where our office is. Um, then they can start typing in there. The other option is the vertical option, which is more of a, a quick search type of thing where they can search for bedrooms, bathrooms, and a price range, and then just hit go. Um, whichever option you want, uh, perfectly up to you. And you can change that right here on the home filters design section, horizontal or vertical. I'm gonna set it back to horizontal. Um, and then right down here, you see create a slider first. This is where, if you had a slider created, you would choose which images are going to appear here. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a slider. So I'm going to I'm going to hit this little X button here. That's going to take us out of the customize screen. If you make any changes that you want to save, make sure you hit the blue Save and Publish button. Uh, in this case, we really haven't made any changes. I'm going to hit the X button and tell my browser that yes, I really do want to go back. And that's going to take you back to your dashboard, wherever you were on your dashboard uh, before you went into the customized page. It'll take you right back there. So let's go ahead and make a new slider. And on the left-hand side here, you'll see a section that says slider. And if you click on that, you're going to see all of the sliders that you have. In this case, there aren't any. So we're going to make a new one. And there's a button right here that says new slider. And you might notice on the side here, there's an option that says new slider. Either one of those is fine. Uh, you can press uh, either button and it will take you to the same place. Sliders are pretty simple. Really what you do is you just add a name. So we're going to call this the null slider. Uh, usually your site when it's deployed will have a slider already um, 
created. That's just called the null slider. I'm going to publish this, and I'm going to close this little WordPress SEO section here. You really don't need that for your sliders. Um, so we see it's null, and right down here is where you add your images, and there's no images on this slider. So I just want to show you that if we go back to the customize uh, page and go to theme options, so, sorry, I clicked the wrong button, theme options. Now you'll see an option here that says select home page background slider, and your site should have a null slider already created. And even though there's no images in there, it's still going to display this default background image. So let's go ahead and make yet another slider. And this is going to be the one that we're going to use for the website. And let's just call this one the default slider. This is the slider that we're going to default to using uh, unless for some reason we want to make another slider. So I went ahead and I published the slider, even though there's no images there, just because I wanted to show you here when we refresh this uh, customized page that now you're going to see an option. You can choose default. You can choose null. As you can see, either way, that image isn't going to change because we haven't put anything in there. So let's go ahead and put some images in there. Now, I've got some uh, some images that I have chosen sort of specially as uh, background slider images that work, uh, that work pretty well. So I'm going to bring them over here and show you some examples. Um, now, these, uh, these images... Um, are all about um, about 2,000 pixels wide. Uh, they're not super high resolution because we're not going to print these pictures out, uh, pictures out. But you want them to be uh, fairly large images in case someone's viewing them on a large monitor. You don't want to get them, you know, too pixelated. Uh, you can find stock images on uh, uh, sites like iStock Photo or uh, Shutterstock, that sort of thing. Um, or you can actually go on to, uh, you know, like a Google search, and you can choose a, a search filter to only show you large images. Um, so once you get the images that you want to use, all you have to do is just click and drag the image right into this little dotted section. And it's going to upload the image. Um, You'll see this image, it says it's 778 kilobytes, uh, and that's an okay size for an image. Uh, you generally want to keep it under one megabyte in size. Anything larger than that, it's going to start to affect your, uh, your website load time, and that's actually going to be bad for you in the search engines. So I went ahead and I clicked Update, and we're going to go back to the Customize page, and we're going to reload it again, going to refresh it. And I'm going to change the slider from null. Let hmm. me go ahead and reload it from scratch here. All right, theme options, slider. It's only showing me null. Why is it not showing me my default slider? It just showed it a minute ago. I know why it's not showing me. It's because my I've got my browser set to cache previous versions to load quicker. I really should turn that off. But okay, so now we're going to choose that default slider, and here you're going to see the image update. Uh, so now we've got a nice uh, sunset image. Uh, you can actually add multiple images to your slider. So let's go back to this slider and edit it, and let's add another image. Let's add... Uh, this uh, this golf course here. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag it right into that dotted box, and now we're we've got a uh, a second image. So we click update, and now let's go ahead and take a look at the home page. You see there we've got the beach. Uh, that's the first image that we loaded. Now what happens with these uh, with these sliders is when you upload multiple files. Every time your page is loaded, you are going to load a random image from that collection of files that you've uploaded. So sometimes you might see the same picture twice. Sometimes it might go to uh, the dip. See there, we've got that other picture. If we re reload it again, yeah, see that's the same golf course. It's going to pull 
uh, one of those pictures. So in this case, there's just two pictures. There's a 50-50 chance. You can put as many of these pictures in there as you like. Uh, if you just want one particular image to sort of fit the aesthetic of your site, then that's absolutely fine. Most people just go with one image. Uh, one of the biggest questions uh, that we get is, hey, can we get it so the images actually move across the screen? You know, every couple seconds, one image will go away and another image will appear. Uh, we actually specifically don't do that. Uh, and the reason we don't do that is because there's been a lot of research done on what gets people to convert uh, on sites like your website, a site where you actually want people to register. And moving images like that actually kill conversion rates because instead of searching for property, viewing a property listing, they just sort of sit there and look at the pictures for a little while and then they move on to another website. Uh, so because of that, the image is only ever going to show one image at a time because you want people to get onto this property search. You want them to get down here and start viewing listings. So, so that is how you change your uh, splash image, the uh, as we call it, a slider. So there's a lot more stuff that you can change on your homepage. Right here, by default, it says search for real estate. Uh, maybe you want to, uh, you know, maybe you want to change that. This uh, fake website here is for a realtor named Karen Starr. So let's go ahead and put her uh, put her name up here instead of search for real estate let's have it say um you know karen star welcome to welcome to karen stars website there we go and as you can see you can change that text you can change uh this text color as well up here in the uh the colored section uh you might want it to be white to stand out against the background better uh you could really make it any uh any color um right down here there's some more text here by default it's this 100 percent free blah 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 uh you can go down here and you'll see right here the welcome top text you can change that to say um whatever you want um Real estate in beautiful Estero, Florida. And then right down here, you can change this text as well. You can even change the text that appears on this uh, this search button here. This button would just take you right to a, a search page. Uh, there is uh, another theme that you can choose. Uh, the I believe it's the, the classic theme, where you can actually change... Um, what the button links to um but we found that everyone just sort of wants to link it to the search button uh the search page because that's how you're going to get people to convert on your site so we're going to save our changes there and let's go ahead and open the home page again in a, a larger window and i'm going to zoom out here so we can sort of see more of the site at the same time so right underneath that splash page section and this uh, button button here that's got to the search page, uh, we jump right into providing listings. Uh, listings are sort of the, the bread and butter of your web page. Uh, you want to show uh, listings and you want to show um, new listings. You want to make sure that you're not showing um, older listings. Uh, and the reason that you want to show new listings is, again, because of search engines. Uh, when search engines crawl your site, they're going to see that you've got uh, you know, listing information on your homepage. And if you have the fresher listing information, they actually will rank you higher on their search engine results. So under your uh, on your dashboard, under your Refinely settings here, you're going to hover over Refinely, and we're going to click on Settings. Um, there are some uh, filters here that will appear. Um, one of them, uh, the second one actually, general settings, one of them is going to be default sort. On this site, we haven't set a default sort. You really want to make sure that that is set to days on market newest. A lot of people, you know, they really, really want to get those high price listings on their homepage. And, it's, you know, that's understandable. Uh, but if you sort it by the highest price listings first, what you're going to get 
is a bunch of listings that never change. Uh, those listings can stay, especially in an area like this, they can stay on the MLS for weeks or even months at a time. So you want those web, uh, those web listings to be, uh, or I'm sorry, those MLS listings to be updated, you know, multiple times a day. Uh, and you want to get the, uh, the freshest ones on there. Um, so let's see if I refresh here, let's see if the listings actually change. It might've, uh, yeah, it was. It looked like it was just pulling in the newest listings by default. So in that case, nothing here is really going to change. Okay, so this is where you can really start to customize your site as far as what kind of uh, leads you want to get and what sort of areas you want to specialize in. These listing sections here are controlled by something called widgets, and you can access the widgets here on your customize page. There's a whole section right above theme options that says widgets. So what we're going to do is we're going to open that up and take a look behind the scenes, going to pull the curtain back to see how these listings populate on your homepage. Um, depending on what page you are, you're going to what page you're on, you're going to see different widget areas. If you're on the home page, you're going to see the home page sidebar area. Don't let the word sidebar fool you. It doesn't necessarily mean that things are on the side. It's really just a widget area. In the case of the home page sidebar, all of this section here from new listings down to here. This is all the uh the homepage sidebar area. And you can really start jamming more stuff in there. You can make it larger than just these eight listings that we're showing on this demo site. So let's open up the homepage sidebar area. And what we're going to see is there's two widgets in the homepage sidebar area. There's the new listings widget and there's the foreclosed listings widget. And by default, that's what is going to be on your website, just going to be showing the newest listings and the newest foreclosed listings. But it's pretty easy to change these. So let's go ahead and open up the new listings widget. We're going to pop it open there. Now, we've got some options here. First, new listings widget title. By default, it's set to new listings, newest listings. You, know, you can change the title to say whatever you want. Number of listings to show. Let's show more than four listings. Let's show eight listings on there. Okay. So now here's where things get interesting. City name and county name. You can only use one of these fields at a time. You can't use both. Uh, but let's say we're really only interested in showing listings in the city of Estero, Florida. So we're going to type in Estero. And now what happens is all of the wow look at the rentals all of the um all of the listings in this newest listing section it's just going to show the most recent estero listings sort by if you don't choose a sort by it should go to your default but just in case let's put it to days on market newest yeah again see here this is just uh the three most recent listings here look like they're uh they are rental listings and then there's this uh, sales listing here so we'll save that. Let's change the title. Let's make it say newest Estero listings. And by uh, changing the, uh, the listings that are in your homepage, you can start to focus, specialize more in, uh, in specific areas. Uh, the search engines will notice that uh, your listings are all in Estero, and it's going to start associating your website more with Estero than with other surrounding cities. Uh, likewise, um, you could only put listings in Lee County. It's the county where Estero is. And we're going to remove Estero, and we're going to put Lee. So as we update, now you'll see we have listings in Bonita Springs, Fort Myers, uh, more Bonita Springs. There's one in Estero. So now we're seeing everything in Lee County. Uh, down here in southwest Florida, there's a, there's a little area that uh, stretches from Estero down to Naples. That's a pretty hot real estate market. Uh, now let's say, for instance, you wanted to show all the listings in Estero, Bonita Springs, and Naples. Uh, the problem is they're not all in the same county. Naples is actually in a county called Collier County. Well, what you can do 
Let's just change this to newest. Southwest Florida listings. And here under the city name, we're actually going to put in all three city names. So we got Naples, Estero, Bonita Springs. So now here we've got eight listings, and they're all coming in from Naples, Bonita Springs, and Estero. There's Naples, Bonita Springs. Um, looks like Naples is dominating the uh, the listings market right now. Um, but as new listings uh, from Estero come online, they will uh, appear here as well. So you can actually enter multiple city names, and you can do it in a comma-separated list. Uh, there is a, an option here to slide listings, and what that will do is make uh, make the listings actually slide across the page so that people can see more than just eight listings on your homepage. Uh, once again, though, that sort of movement is usually pretty bad for um, for conversion rates. We put it in there because there were a lot of clients who who really insist on having that option. It and yeah, it does look pretty cool. I'll admit that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, really what you want is you want to get people to convert to a lead on your website. So we give you the option to add that there. I personally recommend that you don't uh, set it on there. Uh, so that's the new listings widget. And I'm going to close that widget. And then underneath it, you'll see the refinally foreclosed listings widget. And if you open that up, it's exactly the same as the new listing widget, the exact same options. Um, with foreclosed listings, you actually might want to change the sort and maybe show the, the highest price listings first. Uh, or you might want to keep it as the newest listings and call it like, you know, new hot deals, something like that. Uh, you could really make it say anything you want. But let's say for this instance, uh, on this website, we don't want to show any foreclosed listings. We don't, we just don't want to get involved in that market. Uh, Karen, Karen Starr down here doesn't like dealing with foreclosures. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get rid of the foreclosed listings. Now you could go to number of listings to show and set that to zero. That's not going to work. It doesn't recognize zero. There has to be a number there. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to get rid of this widget altogether. It's not working for us. We don't like it. Down here at the bottom, there's a little button that says remove. We click on it, and boom, it goes away. And that's it. No more foreclosed listings on the home page. Uh, the next widget area down here is the testimonials widget, and you'll see on the uh, the list it goes right in order: home page testimonials. Um, now, if you want to use this for your testimonials, you can add in your testimonials um, and just put in the testimonials widget, set a title, and uh, and that's all there is to it. The testimonials widget is pretty easy. Uh, if you want to use a, um, a third-party uh, testimonials provider, uh, something like, uh, say, Testimonial Tree, uh, then really you'll want to set up uh, a separate page for testimonials uh, rather than put them on the home page. Um, we are working with uh, that particular company to sort of integrate their testimonials into a widget like this as well. Um, so keep an eye on that uh, new listing or new uh, new site features section on your dashboard uh, for more, more news about that coming down the road. Uh, and then the last four widget areas are actually uh, in your footer. And depending on your theme, you might not have a footer widget section. Um, you might actually have, instead of uh, in the widgets section, here in the main section here, you might have areas for footers one, two, three, and four. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, it, wherever they are on your site, uh, they all function the same way. Uh, they just take in text. Uh, they actually take in uh, HTML code. So if you wanted to set up something like having your headshot down there or maybe having a site map uh, here, these are you know, links to different pages on the site. Uh, let us know about it. Uh, put in a support ticket. Uh, you can go to support.refinely.com or you can actually put a, a support ticket right from your dashboard. Uh, we can help you out with that. Um, HTML is really easy for us nerds because we play around with it all the time. Uh, but you really probably don't want to sit around and, and learn how to do computer code. Uh, so that's something that we'll help you with if it's something uh, simple in your footer. 
Um, but if you want to get super fancy, you actually can use HTML on your homepage to add extra content here on your homepage. So again, let's zoom out that homepage here. Uh, and let's do a refresh here to see the changes that we made. Uh, now let's say you wanted on your homepage there to be a little section about uh, Southwest Florida. You want to maybe put in a couple paragraphs of content. It's not a bad idea. Um, search engines do like to see that content right there on the homepage. Um, rule number one when adding content to your website is always use original content. Uh, a lot of agents, and I mean a lot of agents, just go around and copy and paste content from one site onto their site. Uh, what they don't know is that's actually penalizing them in the search engine rankings. Uh, if they don't, uh, if they don't write original content, their website is actually getting pushed down on the search results pages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can use a widget just like um, the listings widget that we edited before, but a little bit different, to add text content onto your home page. So here on the customize section, I'm going to zoom back in so you can see what we're doing. We're going to go to widgets and we're going to click to open the widgets. We're going to go back to that home page sidebar. Right now we've only got one widget there, the Refinely New Listings widget. And we're gonna add a new widget. So we're just gonna click here on Add a Widget. And what we're gonna add is text content. You see there's a lot of di different widget options here. Most of them you're never going to use. Um, but all the way down at the bottom here is the text widget. It's uh, arbitrary text or HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and it's what the internet is mostly written in. Uh, it's the language that your web browser reads and determines what it's showing you. Uh, and that's what we're going to use in a text widget to display content on your page. So let's click on text. And here now we've got a text widget underneath our new listings widget. And if we scroll down here, as we add a title, watch right here, you're going to see the title appear. Text widget title. And there it is. And then text widget content. And then that's going to appear right down there. Uh, now, I'm going to go ahead and click Save before we start to edit this. Uh, now, we said we wanted to have this content here appear above the listings. Well, that's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is grab the widget with your mouse, click, drag it up, and release your mouse button, and it moves your text widget around. Pretty easy. So, we're gonna save and publish. Now, we're gonna open up the text widget again, and we're actually going to uh, show you how to add uh, some content. We'll put a couple paragraphs and we'll put a picture in there. Um, so the title is really easy to change. Uh, we'll change it from text widget title to Welcome to Southwest Florida. So the title updates pretty much as you're typing. The text widget content. Now this is where things get tricky. Uh, the text widget content actually understands the HTML language. Uh, that doesn't mean anything to you. That's uh, that's the bad news. You don't know HTML. Uh, you might know HTML. I mean, some people do, um, but it's not. You know, you don't want to learn HTML necessarily. You want to sell real estate. Uh, you want to add content to your website without having to become a nerd. Uh, the good news is you don't have to learn HTML at all with the Refinely websites. There's a shortcut that's going to let you add your content just like you were typing it into a word processor in a what you see is what you get editor. Um, but I do want to show you here um, that the HTML tags will affect the content here. So we want to move this word content down to another line. So we'll hit enter and save it, publish it, refresh it, go to the home page. Take a look at it there. Oh, it's all still on one line. 
even though down here you moved it down to another line. Well, this is where we're actually going to add an HTML tag. Uh, a tag is anything within these little brackets. In this case, we're going to add the line break tag. It just says, oops, BR. So now you see text widget, and then there's a little line break there that you don't see on the browser. It just actually translates to putting the word content on a new line. Uh, now you're not going to have to learn these uh, these tags. I'm just showing you that uh, that the widget area understands HTML. So we're going to go ahead and save this, and then we're going to leave the customized page, and we're going to go back to the dashboard. Uh, there is a section here uh, called Pages. And if you click on it, you'll notice there's a whole bunch of pages. Uh, if you click on the title of a page, that's where you go into the page editor. But most of the default pages on your site, you can't actually edit through the page editor. There are special page types. If you want to add a new page and add content, um, you click on Add New. And then the page editor appears. I'm going to dismiss this little notice. You could type in the title of your page, and then right down here is where you type in all your content. Uh, I want to show you a little pro tip here. This uh, this bar here, uh, this formatting bar, will let you make text bold or italic. It'll let you make a list. You can center the text. You can add a link. You can even add listings right onto a page or a blog post. Uh, you can actually open up a second formatting bar. Uh, this little icon right here, it's uh, two rectangles with a bunch of dots in them and a couple lines. Uh, it says toolbar toggle if you hover over it. If you click on that, a second formatting bar will appear, and you can add even more uh, special formatting to your uh, text. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I am just going to add some dummy text. Uh, I'm just going to generate some dummy text here real quick. And then I'm going to copy it over to the browser. So here's just some dummy text. Uh, again, you know, this can be whatever you want. This can be your welcome to my website text. This can be your about me text. Uh, it, you know, it can be anything. Uh, so we're going to put that text in there. Let's say we want to make um, we want to make this last paragraph in italics. I'm just going to highlight it and click italic. Pretty easy. Uh, and let's say we want to add a picture there as well. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Add Media button. If you go to uh, support.refinely.com, we do have articles that explain all of this stuff, all of the uh, the page editor options. Um, let's go ahead and put in a picture of a nice little house here in Southwest Florida. We're gonna add the picture, select the picture, uh, insert it into the page. Uh, that doesn't look very good, that's pretty ugly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the picture. We see some options here. You can actually align the picture so that the text will flow around the image. I'm gonna click on align left here. It aligns the picture to the left-hand side, and the text flows around it. Uh, let's make that picture a little bit smaller. You can actually grab it and just resize it right there. So we just want to make it a small picture. So what we want to do now is we want to take, you know what, let's get even crazier. Let's add a link. Maybe add a link to our contact page. Contact us. So we're going to take that. We're going to select Insert Edit Link, and we're going to just link to the contact page. There's an option here that says Link to Existing Content. We'll click that, and we'll search for Contact. There we go. There's our Contact Us page. So we'll click that, and we'll add the link. So now we're going to take this, and we're going to copy and paste it into our text widget. But remember, the text widget wants this HTML content. It wants all these fancy tags and whatnot. So what we're going to do is back in the page editor, the top right of your editing box, there's two little tabs. There's the visual tab, there's the text tab. Normally, you're going to be in the visual tab. That's the tab that's going to make sense to you. Uh, but you can also click this tab here that says text. And you're going to get a whole bunch of 
HTML code. So all you have to do is take this code, select it, and copy it. Go into your text widget and paste it right in there. Uh, there is an option here that says automatically add paragraphs. We're going to click on that. And what it's going to do is it's going to break it up there into paragraphs. And there's our contact link. There's our image. There's our text in italics, exactly the way we wanted it to appear right here on our homepage. And I'm going to refresh the homepage here and show you. Now here's our content. Uh, you don't want to add too much content like this on your home page if you want to add any at all. Uh, and the reason for that is you don't want to push these listings too far down the page. You want people to start clicking on listings because that's what's going to you know, prompt them to register as a lead. Uh, so you don't want to give them too much. Uh, it sounds kind of shady to say it, but you don't want to give them too much for free. You just want to sort of get them on the hook. Um, get them to register as a lead, uh, and then they can view property details all day long. They can search all day long. Um, and the nifty part about that is in your CRM, you can actually see the properties that they viewed. Uh, if they save a search, you can see that saved search. It will set them up on a drip for you. Uh, if they favored any properties, you can go back and, and look at their favorites. Uh, and it can sort of give you a real idea of the kind of property that they're looking for uh, and help you find your clients are right home uh, and uh, you know that leads to closings and we all love closings so um hmm I just realized something here there's another uh, there's another option for a trick that I can do right here so we see we've got this link here that if we click on it it goes to the contact page and there's a little map to our office and there's the contact form and they can contact you you know what would be better, though? Instead of linking them to that contact page, let's put a contact form right here on the home page. It's actually pretty easy to do. So let's go back to our page editor. Go back to our visual tab. And this contact us link, let's get rid of that altogether. We don't want that. Instead of that, let's go all the way down to the bottom here. And let's put a contact form right on the home page. That's pretty nice. They don't even have to leave the home page. Uh, they fill out that contact form. It's going to capture their information as a lead. Um, creating a contact form is probably a lot easier than you think. Here on the formatting bar, there's a whole bunch of options. The option all the way on the end is a little envelope. and you hover over it, it says refine the contact form. Let's click on that. And it inserts a little short code. It's a code snippet. Uh, that doesn't look much like a contact form. And if you go into the text editor and look at it from there, well, it still doesn't look much like a contact form. But luckily, your website knows that that means to insert a contact form here. So we'll go back to our text widget. Let's delete what was in there before and replace it, including that contact form. Save and publish. And then we'll refresh the home page and look at that. We've got a contact form right here on our home page. Uh, you might want to put the contact form underneath your listings. Um, and again, if you wanted to do that, it's as easy as let's go ahead and delete that code snippet there. Let's save this widget. Let's actually add a third widget. It's going to be another text widget. So I'm going to do that again a little bit slower. We've got our two widgets here. This is our text widget with the Welcome to Southwest Florida title. And then we've got our listings widget. So we're going to add a third widget underneath the listings. That's going to give us a contact form. So we click on text. Title, you don't have to put a title at all. The contact us is going to be generated when you paste in that little, oops, we don't need that whole thing. Let's just put in the contact form snippet. And there it is. You can see it already right here on the preview underneath the listings. Let's go back to uh, a larger view so we can take a, a better look at our site. So we've got, and you'll see this uh, this splash image that we put here before. Um, the reason you want to put a, a nice big image here is because say it's zoomed out here, it's not going to get pixely at all, and it's still going to look good. It actually um, changes. 
depending on the size of the uh, the viewport. So if you're looking at it on a phone like that, you can still see the whole uh, you know the picture fills up the whole area. If you're looking at at it on a desktop, it looks nice and big like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look. We've got our splash image that we added. We've got our text widget. We've got our listings widget. And then right below that, we've got another text widget. And this has a contact form. And once again, this contact form does work as a lead capture. So you can actually get a uh, lead capture right from your home page. Good times. So, once again, text widgets do take HTML, and you can find HTML right on the text tab of your page editor. Now, this page here, we haven't added a title for, and that's fine because we're not going to keep this page. We're just going to go ahead and click Move to Trash, and that page goes away. Yes, I really want to leave this page. So, that page won't be published on your website. You don't have to worry about... Um, about having duplicate content uh, on your own site because that page won't be published. That page is in the trash. Um, and once again, the uh, the widget areas uh, the for the footer, these uh, take text widgets as well. Um, so there's a few other sections here in the customized page that you might want to uh, take a look at. Again, that background image. Let's see, here's Subtle Patterns. Subtle Patterns is working for us now. So, uh, like I said, it's subtlepatterns.com. It's free. Uh, it's a free service. Uh, you can find any sort of pattern that you want. And like, you know, the name says, they're pretty, they're pretty subtle. So let's, here's like a swirly pattern here. I'm going to click on the preview button and watch. You'll see these little squares here get updated with the new pattern. Um, so let's say we want to take this pattern and we actually want to put this on the background of our website. We're going to click on the download button and I'm going to fast forward through the clock and click start download now. Oh, it looks like they want you to, uh, to sign. Oh, you can click right here. Never show this again. I don't want to sign up. Never show this again. And then we're gonna, it's gonna download that pattern as a, uh, as a, a small file. Oh, it's going so slow. There we go. So I'm gonna open up this, uh, this file here. And what it, what it shows us is it actually has a tiny little image. So I'm gonna go back to our customized page, open up my background image. And we're going to select an image. I've got it in my downloads folder. So I'm going to select an image and then click upload files. And then I'm just going to drag and drop this file right here, symphony.png. It's a pretty subtle image. It's a small image, and it's going to be repeated over and over again. It's going to be tiled. And there it is. You can see it behind the menu here. You can see it's a pretty subtle pattern, hence the name Subtle Patterns. It's behind our text widget area. It's behind our listings behind our contact form, uh, you know, doesn't look half bad, really. Um, so if you want to just uh, customize that page a little bit more, adding a background image might be a good idea. But if you do add a background image, highly suggest that you add a tiled image um, like the ones that you can get at subtlepatterns.com. Um, I, I promise I'm not advertising that site. I'm not getting any kickbacks from it. It's just uh, it's just one that I tend to use a lot because it's free uh, and it's pretty easy to browse. Um, but any sort of tiled background image uh, will work. You could do a Google image search and find you know a whole bunch of them that you can use. Um, so we've used uh, the customized page here to change the content of our home page. Uh, we've changed it visually by adding the pattern, uh, keeping the same logo here just because, um, you know, adding a logo is a pretty simple thing. I don't think I'm going to have to walk through that with you. Um, we changed the text here. We added some more content on the home page. We changed which um, listings we want to view on the home page. Added a contact form. Uh, you know, the site's starting to take off. Uh, what else have we got here? Socials. 
Uh, if you have uh, social media profiles, if you click on the social section, uh, you'll see there's a link for your Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, or Google+. And all you have to do is type in the link to your Facebook page, facebook.com slash refinely. I don't know if that's actually a URL for our Facebook page or not. Click on Save and Publish, and what that's going to do is it's going to associate uh, your page with that Facebook profile. Um, it might not actually show a link, uh, and I'm here to tell you that's okay. Uh, in fact, you're probably better off not showing the link. Why is that? Uh, it's pretty simple. You don't want people to leave your site. You want them to get to your site from your Facebook page, maybe, um, or from your Twitter feed. But once they're on your website, you don't want them to go looking at your Twitter feed. You don't want them to look at your YouTube profile. You want them to register as a link, or I'm sorry, register as a lead. Uh, that's really why you want to, um, why you don't necessarily want to show the uh, the links to your social media uh, profiles. Might be something that you'll put on your contact page, maybe down here in the footer, you know, in a small area. Um, your contact info section. Uh, now we set this up for you um, when you first uh, when you first register with us. Um, and if we go to the contact us page, you're going to see um, where this uh, this data maps to. So we've got the name of your company. It's a fake company. The address. This is actually just the address to our office here in Estero. A phone number email address. Now we put our email address on here. You may not necessarily want to put your email address on your website. And I know that sounds crazy. But trust me, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to pull a fast one on you. Uh, when you put your email address on your website, uh, people can anyone can see it and that includes spam robots. Spam robots crawl websites just looking for email addresses. They take those email addresses and they put them on uh, they put them on a list, and next thing you know, you're getting you know all kinds of great deals for knockoff Gucci handbags in your email inbox that you really don't want to deal with. Uh, so it might be a good idea to skip adding your email address on there. Um, you really want them to contact you through the contact form uh, because that's going to uh, capture their info as a lead uh, or through a phone call. I mean, nothing beats getting someone on the phone. Um, below that is your latitude and longitude address. You can actually get them from Google Maps. Unless your office address changes, you don't really need to change this. Um, unless, of course, we put it in wrong for some reason, uh, in which case let us know. Uh, and we'll fix the latitude and longitude uh, for your correct address. Um, so, so that's it for the contact info. Um, this phone number here will appear at the uh, top of your website right here. Uh, so if you need to change that number, this is the number that you'll want to put in there. And the very last section on the customized page is this JS snippet and custom CSS section. Uh, I'm not going to open that section because it's full of angry bees uh, and that will attack me if I open it. Uh, not really, but this is a section where you're going to put in JavaScript or CSS code. Uh, which is stuff that can seriously alter the appearance and the functionality of your site. Um, unless you absolutely 100% know what you're doing, we highly recommend you do not go into the JS snippet and custom CSS section. Um, if you are using Google Analytics, they might give you some JavaScripts. Uh, that is the type of thing that you would paste in the JS snippet section. If you ever have any questions on that stuff, please contact us first, um, and we will make sure that your site doesn't break by putting uh, content in there. Because if you do put the wrong content in there, uh, some bad things could happen. You could end up on a blacklist uh, where a robot starts spending, sending out a bunch of spam emails from your server, uh, and that's really going to hurt you on your SEO and your search engine optimization. Uh, so you want to be very careful when putting anything in there. Um, so that is pretty much it for the uh, customized section. Uh, I will say uh, one thing. If you have the classic theme, um, let's go ahead and bring up the classic theme. Uh, here on the classic demo, um, there is a section here 
where you can add text. Uh, it is also HTML sensitive. It's not a text widget. It's called the home page uh, second block. There's two blocks. There's the first block here, and then there's the second block. Uh, where you can upload an image uh, and you can add a little bit of content here, sort of welcome to my website thing. Uh, if you do want to use HTML code, you can use the exact same uh, workaround that we used for the other theme um, to add HTML code there. You really probably only want to put one or two uh, paragraphs in there anyway. Um, if you want to add text as a text widget, down here where your listings are, uh, it can be a little bit trickier. Um, it could, it won't necessarily break your site, but it won't, it won't look very good. Uh, if you're married to that idea, let us know, uh, and we will help you through that. It's a little bit trickier um, than using the workaround for text widgets on the other themes, uh, but it's still possible. It's very possible to do it. Uh, there are also ways that you can put in listings for maybe just one particular community. Maybe you only want to show some listings in um, in Bonita Bay, for instance. Uh, you can actually do that as well. But again, that's a little bit trickier. Uh, it's something that uh, if you wanted to do something like that, um, we would love to help you. Um, if you have a website that's focused you know, on one community, you might want to do that. Otherwise, we do have the community pages. Um, uh, community pages are great ways to bring up uh, content that's focused more on one specific uh, community. Uh, it will show related communities. It will show some amenities, any content that you put in there, and it will actually pull up the listings from that community right there. These community pages uh, are kind of like blog posts. Uh, it's actually a great way to get people um, to your site. Uh, it really helps with your uh, your search engine optimization, uh, and it also helps with that freshness algorithm uh, by because it does put in the newest listings in the community first, so you've got the most up to date information. So uh, we are recording this webinar, and we are going to put this up on refinely.com. If you want to go back and take a look, uh, I am going to post some things on the blog at refinely.com uh, about this webinar. Um, if you have any questions at all, or if you need help with anything, you can always contact us through the support link on your dashboard. You can put in a support ticket, or you can even search our knowledge base. Like say you want to, you know, how do I edit a blog post? You can say edit blog post and a whole bunch of articles will appear. Here's, here's one right here, editing a blog post. It'll take you right to our knowledge base with all kinds of uh, helpful stuff here we show you what all of these uh you know these editor buttons do the formatting bars so lots of good stuff here on support.refinely.com uh, and if we're around um if we're here in the office you can also click on the click here to chat um, you can put in your name and your email address and then just click and you can start asking us questions. Uh, if we're not in the office, it will tell you that we're not around. Uh, so you won't, uh, you won't be just talking to nobody. Uh, so I want to thank everyone for coming out today. Um, every Tuesday we're going to be covering a different subject on the IDX website webinars because there's really so much to cover. Uh, that's why we're recording these webinars so that once we uh, once we cover a topic, we can refer to our previous webinars instead of doing a whole new one. Uh, the CRM webinars are a little more consistent. Um, you know, if you go to one or two, it's probably all that you need. Uh, and again, they are on Thursday afternoons, or well, this Thursday it's in the morning. If you go to refinely.com, you can see our webinar schedule. I'll go ahead and show you that right here. We've got our webinars, and then we've also got our archive where you can go back and look at old webinars. Um, so thank you, thank you all for coming out today. Um, again, my name is Ed Seibert, and it's been a pleasure uh, showing you how to modify your homepage on your Refinely IDX website. Uh, thank you very much, and everyone have a great day. Go out there and sell some real estate.